In the hour-long visual production of Black is King, we see different African goddess imagery throughout the film. In this video, we are going to expand on two of the goddesses depicted by Beyoncé. Since there are no official descriptions of where these images are based from, the following are educated guesses on what the artist was trying to portray. So who are these goddesses and what do they represent to the people who believe in them? On this episode of Humble History, we are going to go over the backgrounds and characteristics of both these deities. Let's get into it right now. The first goddess on our list is the goddess Oshun. Oshun is a deity associated with rivers, healing sensuality, and fertility. We at Humble History believe that Oshun was depicted in Blackest King because of the yellow motif that Beyonce wears throughout the album, as well as the fact that she says, I am Oshun. Oshun beliefs originate with the Yoruba people of Nigeria, where she remains an actively worshipped deity. She is part of the pantheon of Yoruba forces called the Orishas. The Orishas are supernatural beings that shape the world. Oshun is one of the most powerful of these beings. In one of the most famous beliefs around Oshun, she is said to have been one of the 17 Orisha sent to Earth to create humanity. From the 17 Orisha, Oshun is the only female among them. Because of her sex, the male Orisha shun her. They attempt to create humanity on their own, but they fail miserably. The 16 male Orisha returned to heaven to ask the supreme god Olodumari for assistance. They told him that they had tried everything they could to fulfill their mission, but they did not succeed. Then Olodumari asked, How many went down to earth? Seventeen, they replied. And how many of you are here now? he asked. Sixteen, they answered. That one, Olodumari said, she is the solution to your problems. If you try without her, you will surely fail. Embarrassed, the sixteen male Orishas returned to earth to ask Oshun for help. Oshun brought forth the waters of the earth, and with the waters, life and humanity came to be. The second goddess on our list is Heteru. Heteru myths originate in ancient Egypt. She was one of the oldest gods that we know from the Egyptian pantheon, and at different times, she was associated with the sky, the sun, and the afterlife. Heteru often appears wearing a crown made of cow horns with a red disc hanging in between. It is through this image that we argue that Blackest King is referencing Heteru as we see Beyonce wearing a similar crown, albeit made of hair and surrounded by leather. The Egyptians used the cow horns to represent Heteru's nurturing nature and she is even depicted as a cow at times. The red disc that she carries represents the Eye of Ra, the sun god in the Egyptian myth. This may go back to the myth of the cow that carried Ra in her horns lifting him up to the cosmos, or the myth that Heteru gave birth to the sun god and raised him above the primeval waters. In both cases, she represents a major figure in the creation of the cosmos. Heteru was also called the goddess of the west as she was believed to receive the setting sun. This aspect of Heteru also symbolized her as the goddess of the afterlife. Although this belief shifted, Heteru was seen as an ease into death that would help humans and gods transition into the afterlife. These stories give us a sense of both Heteru and Oshun being symbols of creation, Heteru with the creation of the cosmos, and Oshun with the creation of humanity. However, they also have opposing beliefs associating them with destruction. Oshun, displeased with humanity, flooded the earth and only ceased to do so when the humans begged for her forgiveness. On stories regarding Heteru, she was sent by Ra to inflict his vengeance on humanity. On the first day, Heteru slaughtered all she could find. On the second day, when the humans begged for Ra's forgiveness, he ordered them to make enough beer that it could fill a river. He told them to add red herbs to give the beer the color of blood. When Hetero arrived on the second day, she saw her reflection in the beer. She drank and in her intoxication forgot about the humans. She returned to Ra and since then the Egyptians honored Hetero each day through a festival of beer. Although Hetero's religion is no longer practiced, 
Oshun is actively worshipped. Each year, many believers travel to the Oshun River in Nigeria to celebrate and worship her in the Oshogbo festival dedicated to her. Outside of Nigeria, Oshun is also celebrated in the Caribbean and South America as well. In places like Trinidad, Cuba, and other Caribbean nations, she is venerated as Osun in the Santeria religion. In Brazil, she takes the name Oxum, where many celebrate her there as well. We don't know why Beyonce chose to include these two religious figures in the film. What we know for sure is that they are both African deities that represented contradictory positions of creation and destruction. To this day, Oshun and Heteru hold weight in the lives of those who believe in them. That's it for today's episode of Humble History. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you want to keep up with future episodes, please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out. I'm your host, Efrata Orgo. This episode was written by Adam Sahalu, and we'll see you on the next episode of Humble History.